So God be praised this morning. God bless you. Hope you're all doing well and, and being encouraged by the Holy Spirit day by day, living in the peace and blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word says that um, this is the day the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, that in mind, you know, every day presents its own challenges. I know that every day is not every day is classified, um, you know, easy. But um, I didn't I didn't choose the word good or bad there, but I said easy. But we know that every day is an opportunity to serve God and every day is an opportunity to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I just hope that you're being blessed out there, you know, that you don't see this uh, lockdown as a time to be gloom or, or, or um, you know, sad in any way. But I think that, you know, this is an opportunity. This is a day that the Lord has made for us. You know, we take it one day at a time. And in Christ, there's everything. There's blessing, there's peace, there's joy. You know, whatever you've got going on out there, if you're lonely, you know, the Lord will bless that loneliness. He will bring his comfort to you by the Holy Spirit. And I just hope that you will, you know, turn your focus on Jesus and trust in him to bless you in all this, in all these circumstances in Jesus' name. So praise God. I want to get pretty much straight into the word this morning because I'm very conscious of doing shorter teachings uh, for the sake of you know people's time and also for the sake of of data and um, so I want to uh, pray for God's blessing on the word and pretty much jump in there and, and ask uh, for the Holy Spirit to help us to deliver and to help us to understand uh, the true word of God praise the Lord so Heavenly Father I just ask that your mercy will be with us this morning Father as we look to you Father for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Father, I thank you there's grace for every day, there's grace for every circumstance. And Lord, I pray that you just cause our, our, our hearts, our minds, our understanding, our soul, Father, our emotions, every single part of us that you have made, Lord God, to be affected by the word of God this morning. We thank you, Father, that in you is blessing and in you is grace and in you is mercy, Father. And we lean on you, we look to you for all grace, Father, this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God, saints. Um, what I was hoping to do, um, the Lord, with the Lord's help and by the power of the Holy Spirit, is to bring us into um, a short teaching this morning to do with the subject of Judgment Day, of all things. And, you know, it's, um, I suppose it's a subject that, you know, might not be the top of the list with a lot of people, but I really believe it is a foundational teaching uh, that as Christians we should um, have a good knowledge of and also have a very healthy respect for um, because I believe that you know we should uh, pretty much fashion our lives after you know the understanding that one day um, you know uh, our lives our time uh, on this planet will be over and you know the Bible talks that that's only like a, a mist that vanishes away uh, so um, it, albeit being a short time then after that you know we will stand before the judgment seat of God uh, in order to give account of those things that we did in the flesh. And I really believe as we look into the scriptures this morning that this is something that, you know, we shouldn't be um, really apprehensive about. But because of the, the grace of God and because of the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ and because of the, you know, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, we know that we can face into a just God and um, be able to stand before him and have comfort and have... Um, just confidence in him that he will bless us uh, on that day so praise god i want to um, maybe take us from second corinthians in chapter five and this is one of the instances in the new testament where the apostle paul uh, spoke about this particular subject uh, to the corinthian church and uh, you know he kind of mentioned it by and by so it kind of um that leads us to think that you know because this subject didn't need any background introduction or anything like that this was something that the saints already knew paul just referenced it and moved on but he's it's the context that i want to maybe look at this morning he said in, in uh, second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8 he said we are confident i say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay, so that's the first scripture I want to start with. We move on to verse 9. He says, Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. And then he says in verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that which he had done, whether it be good or bad. 
And then I just want to bring in verse 11 as well, because it has a um, um, attachment to this. He says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, he said, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also we are made manifest unto your conscience. So praise God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to you this morning. But, you know, I'd like to break it down, saints, into a very kind of maybe systematic way of teaching this this morning. And I want to come from three uh, main truths. Now, as I said already, I do intend to split this up into two, maybe 20 minute sessions. And uh, we do the first session now. Uh, but the three, uh, the three uh, thoughts I want to bring out of this uh, to help us understand this subject of judgment is, number one, that as a saint, we should be comfortable, if you like, knowing that Christ is our saviour, that we can head and meet that day without being absolutely you know, struck with terror because we don't know what's going to happen or, you know, not have a knowledge of it. But we know that there is mercy and there's trust and there's grace in God. That's number one. OK, number two is that we should, you know, having the knowledge of judgment, we should live being influenced by the awareness of this. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically this, that, you know, every single day of our lives, we should always be very careful in the way we behave ourselves and conduct ourselves, how we represent the kingdom of God and be ambassadors to the people that are without you know just basically how we serve god because we know that one day we will go before god and all our actions and all our thoughts our motives and all these different things will be brought out before the lord on that day so praise god with that knowledge you know we need to be careful we don't just live a willy-nilly sort of life and you know just throw caution to the wind and you know we don't do that so the second thought is that we you know we live in the knowledge and in the awareness of the judgment day of god and number three is this that with that truth in mind we should be very willing to take that truth to the world the knowledge of this to the world now i'm not saying that they're going to accept it since i'm not going to say that they're going to with open arms really welcome the message that they're going to be judged one day because people hate accountability people in the world it's very hard to sin and know that you're going to be accountable for the sin so what they do is they justify their sin they turn you know bad for good and good for bad and and say that you're it's all a circumstantial thing and, and I'm a victim of circumstance and people have every method under the sun of you know taking away the accountability of their, their behavior but you know that being said regardless of what people think in their hearts regarding judgment day it is set in stone that judgment day will happen and we know you know scriptures from the book of Revelation that when the Son of Man comes in the skies it says that the nations of the world will run to the rocks and say fall on us and hide us from the, from him and the reason is is because they're not ready for that day since they're not ready they have rejected jesus and they have a knowledge of these things and yet they run from him so you know without any jew um saying any more about that those are the three things i want to build upon this morning so let's jump in and let's look i want to bring maybe um two accounts uh, from the scriptures and the first one is in the book of revelation chapter 20 and we'll start at verse 10 it's always good to get our understanding from god's word by the holy spirit that is our standard so revelation chapter 20 verse 10 so the verse says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which was which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works so praise god we're getting a you know a, a glimpse of what's going on here and just as paul mentioned back here in second corinthians chapter 5 he said we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ and uh, many of you know this already but the the judgment seat if you look back in the greek uh, what it means is the bema seat of christ which which was the judgment seat you'll see that mentioned in the gospels where pilate sat upon the bema seat as he uh, cast judgment over jesus we also see it here in the book of revelation chapter 20 it says i saw the um the dead small and great stand before god um and the books were opened and another book was opened 
and which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of that book so this is the same um, you know uh, setting if you like in verse 11 it said I saw a great white throne which is the bema seat of God and there's a day appointed uh, with the Lord that he will judge all the world in, in that fashion so um, I want to bring three things maybe out of that sense out of that thought to you um, the judgment seat will basically ineffectively judge three categories of people okay so the first was the devils okay Satan and his cohorts and we see in verse 9 uh, what is actually said regarding them it says in the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake and fire and brimstone and the beast and the false prophet uh, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever so you know the bible doesn't mention anything regarding salvation opportunity for the devil any opportunity for him to repent um what's happening to the devil basically we are told in the word that he will be cast into the lake of fire where he'll be tormented for all eternity we don't know anything more about that uh, because the lord doesn't tell choose to tell us anything more about that but we do have uh, many much information with regard to men and how they are judged and the second category of people i want to talk about is the sinner now if we read down through the passage here it talks about the dead the small and the great that they'll stand before god and the books are open so and um, i don't know whether these will be literal books or not i'm ch i choose to believe that they will be uh, these be literal books that god will open up and in these books they recorded all the works and all the actions of mankind because it's very specific saints and it's a good thing to notice here that god is not uh, when god is judging people he judges them basically on what they do their works the bible says their actions because that if you like is the fruit of really what's going on inside the people you know that jesus says make the tree good or make it make it evil he says because a good tree doesn't bring forth evil fruit and an evil tree doesn't bring forth good fruit so if you want to judge a man um, you just look at his fruit look at his works the things that he does and we know that this is what god is specifically um, alluding to in the word of god here but it says i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was open, which is the book of life. Now, I also want to speak about the book of life this morning, because this is so important to the third category that we're talking about here, which is the saint, uh, the child of God, the, the person belonging to Jesus. And it said the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And then it tells us the outcome. It says the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which was in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And the de and death and hell were cast into the lake and fire, which is the second death. And then it says in verse 15, it says that whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So now we know, saints, that on judgment day, um, pretty much that the only people that gain access to the kingdom of God are those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And what I want to do is maybe just look at that a little bit deeper because people living on their own, as we know, living outside of God will be judged for their works. And we know that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. And, and it is pretty much impossible for a man to please God. You know, the Bible has many scriptures to that. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we know that we can't please God without walking in the grace and in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that Jesus said in, in John's Gospel, chapter 15, without me, you can do nothing. You know, uh, So we know that we must bear fruit according to the grace of, our Lord, of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. And they're the works that God will judge. But I want to dig a little bit deeper into the book of life this morning, just as we get in there. And I'm keeping my eye on the time here. Uh, so uh, really quickly, just a high level overview of the book of life. We know that in the Old Testament, and I'm going to just quote these scriptures and I encourage you to go off and maybe have a look at them for yourselves. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 31 and verse 32, you know, it was that occasion where Moses came down from the mountain and the people, um, they made a, a calf of gold and they worshipped the, the calf. And uh, Moses stood before the people and um, uh, he talked, you know, as he prayed to God uh, with regarding to the sin that the people have committed, he prayed that they that God would not blot them out of his book that he had written. And Moses says that if you, if you don't forgive, and he, if forgive them, he says, blot my name out of the book of life. So in actual, in that, in that uh, context, 
Moses was asking God that that he would be the, the scapegoat, the lamb. And you, we can see the thought, you know, that thought coming into, you know, how God regards sin and how God leads us in, that Moses was actually offering himself to be a substitute for the sin. But we know that that couldn't happen. And we know if you read those verses in Exodus chapter 32, we know that God actually said that, no, he says, man, if a man sins, it'll be him that I will blot out of the book. So that was in an Old Testament um, reference to, to uh, the book uh, it doesn't call it the book of life but it calls it God's book um, in the Old Testament but it really refers to I suppose like a register of, of God's people now in Hebrews chapter 12 verse uh, 23 it says to the general assembly of, of the church of the firstborn uh, which are written in heaven you know it's referring to the New Testament church of those that are written in heaven and to God and the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. You know, there's many other uh, references in the New Testament uh, referring to the Lamb's Book of Life. Another one is in Revelation chapter 21, just not far from our scripture this morning. It says, And there shall no wise, Revelation 21, 27, There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So we know there's a specific book that God has, and it's not a book that, you know, it is a book, the Bible talks about it, it's, it's written from the foundation of the world, and I don't want to go into the, the effects of that this morning, but, you know, God records, if you say, if you like, the actions of the Holy Spirit, the actions of Jesus through us in this book of life. And it is this book of life that records the works of the saints. Paul mentions it in Philippians chapter 4 verse um, 2 and 3. He says, I entreat thee also, a true yoke fellow, help these women which laboured with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with the other fellow labourers whose names are in the book of life. So Paul, you know, he that was part of his ministry if you like to the saints he would actually um you know remind them that their names were written in the book of life now what did jesus say about the book of life and this is very very uh, good and very very important to remember you you recall in luke his gospel chapter 10 and where the disciples all came back from uh, the ministry that jesus had given them and they were rejoicing that the spirits were subject unto them and the devils were cast out and so on and jesus but jesus said this in verse 20 he says, notwithstanding, he said, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So Jesus, you know, he pulled that out and the saints were rejoicing in the power of God at that time. And, you know, they're rejoicing in the good things that was being ministered. Things like, um, you know, healings, deliverances, you know, the joy that people had that God had come to set them free from all the bondage of the devil. And Jesus says, you know, he says, notwithstanding, he says, you know, don't rejoice in this, but rather rejoice. He said that your names are written in heaven, you know, and Jesus was setting this blessing far above, you know, all the other blessings that we have in the kingdom of God, that your name would be written, is written in the Lamb's book of life. So praise God. You know, having that in mind, then we know that you know, those that have their names written in the Lamb's Book of, of Life, we know that we will gain entry into heaven simply because if your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. Nevertheless, saints, and this is what I want to say this morning, and this is what's very important, we still undergo a judgment uh, before God, uh, the people that have their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's what Paul was referring to back in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10 because he said we must all appear uh, before the judgment seat of christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body or the things that are done whether they be good or bad you know and that's an important point that we should really pay attention to because he says we're all going to appear before the bema seat of christ and he says we're going to receive things which are the rewards or if you like uh, for the, the works, the things that we did in the body. But Paul did say this. He said, whether they be good or bad. So it's not every work that we do, saints, that will be pleasing to God, but only the ones that are, you know, um, 
led by him, inspired by him, empowered by him, and uh, our motives are for the for the good of the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. You know, and our works vary in different ways. And there's a good example, there's a scripture I often quote. It's in First Corinthians, where Paul addresses this again. First Corinthians chapter three, and we go from verse nine, and I finish up with these verses here. Uh, verse 9 he says for we are laborers together with God we are God's husbandry and we are God's building according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another build it thereupon but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon for no other foundation can any man lay that is laid which is Jesus Christ for if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wool hay or stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for God shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is so if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive reward so it's, it's talking about our works being tried God will try them, he'll try the motive, he'll try the foundation. And the fundamental uh, thing that we need to understand from this passage here is that it's built upon the foundation of Christ. And um, if any man's work shall be burned, he says, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Praise God. That's a welcome scripture there, I know, for every person. It gives us relief that, you know, that even in the event that you know we had wasted our time doing you know good meaning works but these were not maybe ordained of god those works would end up burned up because they were not um, inspired and empowered by the holy spirit but nevertheless those works um even though the works are, been, are burnt up he says the person he himself shall be saved yet so is by fire so we know that our salvation specifically is of god now i just want to give you two more verses before we close out this morning and this is very, very important because when we're talking about the judgment seat of God, um, many times, you know, we can hear people, you know, um, adding, you know, their own um, thoughts to these things. And I, I just want to bring, you know, just solid scriptural um, basis to, to what I'm saying here now is that you will not be judged for your sins at the beam of seat of Christ on judgment day. You will be judged for your works, whether your works are good or bad. If your works are good, you will see, receive reward. If your works are bad, they will be burnt up. But you will not be judged for your sins. Sometimes you hear Christians saying, oh, you know, it's going to be terrible because on that day God is going to put up, you know, a, a screen and he's going to, you're going to be so embarrassed because all your works, all your motives, your heart is going to be laid bare before the people and God is going to judge everything like that. You know, this cannot be because we must understand the purpose of Calvary. Jesus Christ died for your sins at Calvary. You know, the, the Psalm says, 103 verse 12 says this, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. You know, God has, at, at the cross, God has removed your sin from you. The Bible says that as far as the east is from the west, he has taken your sin and removed it far from you. Now, if God does that, then how can he judge you for a sin that he has removed far from you? Now, this is also very powerful because this is specifically talking about the New Testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is, it is a quote from Hebrews chapter 12, chapter 8 and verse 12. And he says this regarding the New Testament covenant of Jesus. He says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities i will remember no more now saints we really got to get our heads and our thinking around this that if god takes your sins from and removes them so far from you from the east is to the west and then he says he will be merciful unto our unrighteousness our sins and our iniquities he will remember no more so god is choosing not to remember our sins you know, David said, if God was, count, was to count our sins against us, who would stand? You know, I'm gracious for that, that when I stand before God, that it won't be an issue 
regarding my sins, the things that I've committed, the evil thoughts in my heart, the failings that I've had over the years, but it will be to do with my works in Jesus Christ because I know that God has forgotten the sins that I've committed and he has placed those sins and he's put them upon Jesus and Jesus was judged at Calvary. His blood was shed for you and for me so that we could be forgiven, so that our sins could be removed. Saints, it's not going to be an issue on Judgment Day before the Bema Seat of God regarding your sins. It will be to do with your works. So with those thoughts in mind, saints, just I want to encourage you this morning to be blessed and to you know, live before God rejoicing in his salvation, but also to be guarded and to remember that, you know, um, we, we need to live every single day just to, to do good works for God and to bless people because we know that these are the things that will be brought up. And we need to, you know, seek opportunity and, and build upon these things. We need to pray about these things and, and seek to help people. And, you know, the, the, the Bible says faith without love is dead and our, our faith is, is, is underpinned, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, with love. Faith works by love, is what I'm saying. Um, it should be the love of God in our heart that motivates us to, to get out there and to serve him, to bless other people. You know, it shouldn't be a thing that we want to, to be you know, um, self-centered or receive blessing ourselves in, as we work for other people, that, but that we selflessly go out there and just bless other people. Um, for the kingdom of God and for the love of God. So let the Lord bless you this morning and I pray that you'll have a wonderful day today in Jesus' name.